Well, hello, my paranormal peeps, and welcome back to another Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. My name is Matt Harvey. I am the founder and lead investigator with Deep Woods Paranormal. My wife and I, along with others, investigate everything paranormal in nature. Every week, we will discuss everything from creepy haunted locations to ghosts to Bigfoot, UFOs, Dogman, and other cryptid creatures, and explore all things paranormal in nature. All right, guys, we're going to pick up where we left off from last time. Uh, we're going to talk about Joe's camp this time. Last time, if you didn't uh, get to listen to this podcast or watch the podcast, we were talking about Black Star Canyon. We talked about my first encounters there, uh, why it was a good Bigfoot location, how many encounters did I have there, uh, what was your favorite encounter, and I shared some old pictures with you guys from there. I do have some old video that I'm going to try and get done. If I can ever get to the opportunity to sit down to do some editing, I have, I'm, I'm so far behind. I've got three to 400 hours of video. I've got to go through and, and go through and edit. And, and also I'm working on the, uh, the show as well. So, and I might be helping some else with another show. So life is just completely busy, uh, right now, especially with all the crazy weather here in Texas and all this stuff going on. It's really affecting my work. And, uh, so like, like I said, it's just been absolutely crazy. So, uh, that's why the podcasts have not been coming out regularly every Friday. So I apologize for that. I'm trying to get ahead right now and get you guys some, some fun podcast podcasts to listen to. Uh, I know we have a very lot of very lot. We have a lot of Bigfoot podcast lovers. So I'm going to try and stick to that topic as much as possible. And I'm going to try and get some of my friends that are also Bigfoot researchers to come on here with us. So Anyways, we're going to talk about Joe's camp. We're going to also talk about some of the first thing, my first encounter there, which was insane, um, where I almost walked into a Bigfoot. Actually, that probably was my second encounter, but it's my one of my favorite ones. Uh, why it's a good Bigfoot location, uh, how many encounters did I have, and uh, what was your favorite encounter? If I just said that and show some old pictures and some video this time. So let's get into this. Uh, let's see. Let me get into where Joe's camp was. All right. So this one's in Texas. So let me zoom back out. Um, so here's Texas and yes, I do drop pins for Bigfoot sightings, um, all throughout the United States. I'm sorry, California. I'm missing a lot of my pins. Uh, I got a new phone and for some reason, Google decided not to transfer, the pins to my new phone, which also affected a lot of the things, but I'm missing a lot of pins from across the U.S. So if you're looking at this and you're going, um, that's not all the Bigfoot reports, you're, you're correct. There's probably tens of thousands of Bigfoot Bigfoot sightings that are not on this map um, that should be. And uh, this is only the little dots you see are only Bigfoot reports. Um, my main focus has really, really been on Texas right now. Uh, cause that's basically where we're shooting our show. And that's basically where we're basically trying to focus on. Um, if you don't know, we're doing a show called exploring the unknown with Matt and Amanda, and we're kind of traveling through Texas. It doesn't all only Bigfoot's haunted locations, um, dog, man, cryptid creatures, maybe river monsters, um, uh, you, you know, UFOs, aliens, we're, we're, we're going to be documenting as many places as we can. Uh, and I've, I, I basically scrapped the first attempt at that show, uh, was not happy with it at all. Um, so we're going to start over and Amanda and I are going to figure it out this time, uh, and then hopefully have some great results. And I hope you guys really enjoy that show when I'm able to get it done, uh, as a producer, it's, it's, it's extremely hard to do everything by myself. And, uh, so it just takes a lot longer to do everything and having to work a full-time job and do other things, um, and have a personal life, which I'm not used to, um, is also very interesting and very fun, but it also takes away from that. So, all right, guys, enough rambling on. I apologize. I do that sometimes. Uh, okay. So let's talk about Joe's. Joe lives in what we consider to be East Texas. If you cut Texas in half, there's a lot more reports to the, the east and maybe into the middle of Texas um, from the coastline all the way up to Oklahoma and Arkansas. Louisiana has a lot of reports. Um, so does Mississippi. Uh, I'm sure Alabama does too. I just haven't gotten that many reports from there. And then as you go into West Texas, New Mexico, 
the Panhandle, Oklahoma, and Arizona and stuff, and Colorado. There aren't as many reports. They are. There are reports. I just probably don't hear about them as much as I do Texas. Okay, so let's get into Texas here. Uh, Joe lives up here in the Sabine National Forest. This area is a hot spot for Bigfoots. As you can see, there's a lot of pins dropped here. Uh, again, when uh, I switched phones, unfortunately, my phone decided to delete a lot of my hotspots because there's hotspots all along this river and then uh, in through these forests everywhere across both sides of uh, the Louisiana side and then, of course, the Texas side as well. Um, Joe was able to take us out to some really cool locations that only he knew about and uh, his friend David knew about. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't had any contact with David. I was not able to get his contact information uh, before Joe um, unfortunately passed away. So um, basically, we're going to continue to talk about his location probably forever. And uh, one of these days, I will try and get up there and knock on a door if there's any door left. Uh, or go talk to neighbors and see who actually owns the place now, if, if anybody owns it, or if it stayed in the family and they're just going to leave it be. Uh, I'd like to see if I can get a hold of some of those family members. I do know that some of our um, of the his family actually did listen to our podcast. So if you're one of Joe's uh, Hughes' relatives or you're a friend of his or whatever and you have information, uh, you can privately message me. My information is down below. My cell number's there. Feel free to call or text me. Uh, I would love to know what's going on with this property. I pray to God that they didn't go through and just bulldoze everything and put a home up there and and stuff like that and uh, tear all the trees out and whatever else. Uh, I would honestly hope that they just left it wild, let it go, let the Bigfoots have their territory and leave them be. That was Joe's final wishes as well. Um, and that's what he and I always talked about. That's what, why we click so well, because we were both on the same page. Um, the whole idea is to protect Bigfoots and uh, not to have them be um, killed or whatever, because I think it's a double-edged sword. Um, yes, do I want to prove that Bigfoots are real? Yes, I do. Would I like to get a specimen, um, a capture one? Yes. Would I like to um, prove that beyond a reasonable doubt that they're real, of course. The other side of that is, in Texas, it's not legal to kill a Bigfoot. I would have to have a major legal team helping us, wildlife experts, you name it. We have to have a whole bunch of experts come in and help us with this. And essentially, we would probably try to capture one and basically just just... You know, maybe sedated enough so we don't bother it, don't scare it, don't freak it out, but get some skin samples, get some hair samples, uh, get some saliva maybe, get some stool samples, um, take some pictures, uh, and really maybe do some scans of the feet uh, and really get a good, maybe get some x-rays if we could do anything and everything we had to do scientifically to prove that they're real without killing one. And then carefully quietly put it back where we found it and leave without a trace and maybe somehow insert some kind of a tracker into this device, into this entity, and then quietly without Big Brother or anybody else knowing, um, monitor it and then continue to document, be able to use that to document and maybe do that several times in several places so we can start documenting uh, them and start studying them and really get some real answers to them. And uh, like I said, the problem with that is that we'd have to have legislation in place at that point in time where we can prove that they exist and get a law pa passed that you can't harass or and or kill Bigfoots because big time hunters, hunters, and a lot of other people would come into the Texas and in other places where Bigfoots exist, and they would basically probably you know, severely wipe out the population. If you have hunters in there looking for them and trying to kill them, they're going to become more aggressive towards humans and we're going to have a lot more issues. I would imagine if you've ever been into the forest, deep in the forest, you probably didn't even know it, but you probably walked by one or one was watching you or something like that. And you probably didn't even know they're there. 
Anyways, so let's get back to um, talking about Joe's. So what makes Joe's camp, I'm going to kind of go out of order. What makes Joe's camp a good location for Bigfoots? I've been trying to solve this mystery for a long time. And one of the things I noticed was, number one, there's a lot of a lot of deer, a lot of animals in this place. Um, this is a chicken farm, too. So um, what I found out about chicken farms is when they're when they have dead chickens, they take them out because a lot of them are out, in, at least in Texas, out in the, out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, this is before the bird flu thing happened. I don't know if they still do or not, but they would take the bodies out and then just throw them out to the wildlife. And uh, I know a place around here where someone was taking them out and dumping the birds and something that had been watching and eating the birds and uh, basically something, I should say, something tall, large, and hairy had been watching this this guy do this for a long period of time and been taking, you know, uh, basically taking advantage of the gratitude of the, uh, of the situation and uh, unfortunately showed itself to this person. Right after he, he dropped it, he turned around, he saw one pick it up and walk away into the forest with it. And so you know, now he's, a, of course, a believer. And he told a friend of mine this. Uh, both of them are not into Bigfoot or anything like that. But they that actually got to me. And uh, so we're working on trying to maybe get out to that area and see if we can do some research. Let's just put it that way. It's not this location, uh, but it is somewhere around here. Anyways, so you got a place where they can get easy picking foods, okay? You've got deer. You've got huge raccoons, huge squirrels, and you'll see one on, on one of the videos I'm going to show you. Um, you got possums. you got everything up here. And so also Joe's Camp had four freshwater creeks and so basically that water was coming up pure right out of the ground and you could basically go and, and drink right out of those i don't know if i would i'd probably still filter and probably boil the water but for an animal that's used to it and and uh can drink that kind of water i mean that water was crystal clear uh essentially it could basically just take that there was cover there was a lot of cover and so uh essentially they could go and hide behind trees. They could walk right through either side of his property. And well, now Joe was more aware of his surroundings. And when I got there, he became even more aware of his surroundings. So was I, I became more aware of my surroundings too, as I was up there. And I really learned from him and he learned from me. And we started having encounters. Now I took six different people up there and all six of them had different encounters. Um, with Bigfoots. One friend of mine, she saw a Bigfoot walk right across the road right in front of Joe's camp. It walked right out of the bamboo forest across the road into the tree line next to it. And that's a very wooded deer area. And also that's kind of a sanctuary. They're not supposed to be hunting over there, but they still do. Um, we heard tree knocks. Uh, we heard um, growls sometimes. We heard, uh, well, let me just show you. Well, let me stop sharing this screen. All right, let me share a different screen with you. All right, so we found tree structures. So let me pop this open. All right, so TPs were very common on his property. Um, there was a, especially in the bamboo forest. I mean, they broke bamboo, and you've heard me talk about this, but they broke bamboo that was literally three inches, four inches thick. I tried to break a one inch piece of bamboo on my knee. And it left a big old bruise on my knee. That thing would not break. I just saw halfway through it to get it to break. And they're snapping off these pieces that are, you know, the size of, of three or four inches wide. I mean, the width of my cup. I mean, it, it's just insane. So, but yeah, they were snapping branches off, branches, tree, um, tree, tree trims off there. Excuse me. They're tree trunks off they were snapping large branches and other things and then they're making these crazy structures and they it was just crazy hold on a second so they would bend trees over in the middle of the night you haven't lived until you've been up in a location in the middle of the forest 
where you're sleeping in, in somebody's uh, RV, and all of a sudden you hear a doom, 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 doom. And then you hear, snap. I'm not, I'm not even getting close to as loud as it was. It snapped like a tree just like this at the base. Just snap it off. Right over. Insane. And this tree was probably four or five, six inches wide. Just snap it off. Brand Beautiful tree. Very green. Very lush. Joe's area gets a lot of rain. And a uh, very healthy area. So, again, that's why he has the springs, too. But, yeah, they just bent trees over in the middle of the night. We could hear him do it. And then um, if you've ever heard me talk about the whole reason I went up to Joe's and all the stories he told me when he first called me, I'm like, and I met him off Facebook, I'm like, what? I couldn't believe him. I, I really honestly didn't believe him. And I'm like, this is way too good to be true. There's just no way that everything he's telling me is true. And you can go back and listen to those accounts. But this picture doesn't even do this justice. The trees that were just bent over everywhere. And I know that the trees sometimes will grow like this to basically get sunlight in, in the forest. And that's pretty common. But when you see a tree like this bent over and then branches, vines like wrapped around these um, branches and then there, there's other dead fall and other branches like woven in like they were placed there. There's there's no reason for that tree to be there. There's no broken off stumps. There's no nothing around it. But all of a sudden, it, it looks like a blind. They've made a hunting blind and stuff like that. So just insane. Let me see if I can get out of here. All right. So we kind of looked at that. There's, there's hundreds of those. And then we had a lot of other things happen. So let me... Um, talk about this too a lot of people say that juvenile bigfoots and you can see if you can kind of look let me zoom in a little bit you can see more trees bent over everywhere everywhere there was thousands of them little trees big trees um trees that were like this these pine trees and then essentially there was this um something snapped the top of this pine tree off and the, let the limbs grow out every which way and then they put a bunch of uh basically grass and stuff from down here they brought it up here you can see it's growing over this i mean it's basically covered every which way and joe told me that was basically he had looked up one day in this tree guys and he had seen a baby bigfoot up here in this tree so he took this picture of it this is joe's picture uh, and he was like, what the hell? And then basically it basically climbed down and ran from him. But it got about about halfway down and then just basically let go of the tree and ran and stuff. So um, if you remember me talking about Bastrop, I saw in one of the videos, you can see a baby Bigfoot. That's probably about, you know, maybe a little bit bigger. Maybe it's a, it's a young juvenile. It's up in the tree and it's watching me walk by. Happens really quick. Uh, I didn't highlight it. I didn't po point any pointers at it. You just have to go back and watch that video. In fact, I want to go back down to Bastrop. Maybe that's another place we'll talk about next time on this podcast. But essentially, yeah, just a, a place where something had gone up there and kind of made a nest and stuff. Uh, again, more trees bent over. Uh, this is basically a trail camp. Uh, we have, God, Joe gave me all of his trail camp pictures. We had, we would spent four years researching up there. We have almost probably close to 200,000 photos and videos from up there. And about 99.9% .9 of them are nothing. There's nothing there. Uh, recently, a friend of mine on Facebook has, has been posting some photos. And I'm like, what, you know, he's, and you start looking at them. You're like, wait, there's a Bigfoot in that picture. But it's, it's like way back in the, in the brush. And you have to really have a good eye to see it. Um, and you start zooming in like, oh my gosh, it's a Bigfoot. And so I started kind of look re-looking through Joe's pictures and his trail cams and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, I missed a ton of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, you can see how wooded this is. And if you're standing 10, 15 feet back, I could be standing here in a complete like yellow or 
or a real bright colored shirt and and a whole outfit maybe and you wouldn't even see me i could be like whole if unless i had some kind of a, a way of for you to get my attention or me to get your attention you wouldn't see me back here if i was standing back in this area and uh so yeah it was just crazy that they did that now here's a video let me set this up for you if you've watched the joe's camp um if you watch the Joe's Camp video, you've seen me interviewing Joe. This is Joe on the right. You can kind of see his head and his hair. And remember this. See how Joe's hair looks? Okay, so we're going to show you some trap cams later. And if you're if you're on the audio podcast or listening to the audio podcast on, on YouTube here or Rumble, um, you're welcome to come over to our um, YouTube or Rumble page, and the video podcast will probably be out either a day after this or, or whatever. Um, but it'll be out. Uh, so what I want you guys to look for is right here around here. And I circled it. You'll see some, a Bigfoot and maybe it's up here. Uh, a Bigfoot actually comes out of the forest and is standing there watching to see what we're doing. So watch this video. So it blurs out a little bit. And then I realize we're being watched. Damn, freaking Bigfoot like over there. There's a Bigfoot standing there. right there. Yeah. yeah. So it's hard to see. Yeah, there's a Bigfoot standing right there. But it's standing right here. You can kind of see the face if I stop making it blurry. Um, it's really hard to see. But there's a huge Bigfoot standing right here. You can see where they bent the trees over the night before. This happened the night before I did this video. You can see all the tree bends and everything. This is their area um, that they like to kind of hang out in. You can see a darker figure here. You can kind of see a darker figure through the trees here. This is just, I think this is just a tree. But they're everywhere. I mean, if you look over here, there's something here. Sorry, my eyes doing something weird. But it, it stands there, and then it moves. And then you see the squirrel. You can see how big that squirrel is. That thing's huge. It's about the size of a cat. That is totally big, but I can see the head. Sorry, I'm getting texts from work. I can see the legs. He's just standing there with his head. Oh, it just moved his head a little bit. But it's it's pretty much in this clearing here. It's just standing there looking at us. And I can kind of see something here, too. You can kind of see some eyes looking through. You can see the eye and the eye. And it's it's got its head kind of tilted like this, but it's opposite. You can see two red eyes. One red eye here, one eye, red eye here. That thing is tall. This might be the uh, dominant male of the pack. And it's you can kind of see dark shades through here. Unfortunately, I cannot zoom in on this video. Uh, for some reason, it's stuck at 80, 86%. I might put this video out as a separate video for you guys to watch. I'll try and cr uh, fix this. I'll try and zoom in a little bit and, and see if I can see it a little bit better. And... Uh, Maybe somebody with better technology can take a look at it as well and just see what they see and uh, either confirm it is or isn't. Uh, I'm not saying 100% this is, but there's something standing here. You can you can actually see the eyes right here. Look at that. Red eye, red eye. And they're just standing there. I wish I could zoom in on that because we might be able to see a head. But this thing, this thing's tall. I mean, top of my head was about, was under this thing when I walked under here. These look these loops here look a lot uh, shorter than they actually are. This loop is probably about 14, 15 feet. I wish I would have measured it. I didn't even think to do that. Now I, I wish I would have. But anyways, we're going to move on. So here's some trail cam photos. Uh, you can see there's actually a deer here. The whole reason I, I'm showing you this is just to show you how almost transparent that deer kind of looks. You can almost see the tree through the deer because it's moving as the picture is being taken. Even though this is a very high end 18 megapixel camera, it's um, it still is very qu uh, quick. You can see the walking path through here. This is a path that they would take a lot. Um, there were no actual uh, tree bins through this area, which is interesting. I think this was an area that they would walk through, but you could see the downed uh, tree here. And, Essentially, anytime we would go walking up here, there would always be some kind of obstacle, like this branch would be laid between these uh, these trees here and then pushed across here. 
almost like a barrier. Like you're not supposed to go through here. And it was hilarious. It just made us laugh because these Bigfoots have these personalities that it's like, nope, this is a no-go zone. Please don't come through here. This is my territory. I am, or or they would take a vine if there's a vine over here and they put it across, or they take a big log and lay it across the path. And it's like, nope, you're not supposed to come through here. And I noticed that the more I try to walk through these areas, the more that was happening. Um, here's a dead deer carcass. Again, I talked about this um, a while ago. We found this fresh deer kill. Again, there's no legs on this deer. Um, and we basically found this about 20, 30 feet up the path, uh, about an hour or two after we first found it. It had been moved. We didn't hear anything, didn't see anything, um, but it got moved, which was interesting. Again, um, another trail cam picture. Can't remember exactly what set this off. I think there's a deer in this picture somewhere. I think it's right there, actually. Maybe not. There's a deer in here somewhere. And, and again, if you can find it, you know, that's cool. But very hard to find, um, find them in this picture. They blend in so well. And that just goes to show you how well Bigfoots uh, also are able to uh, blend in. Here's Joe's hand. Um, here's a footprint. You can see how big this is. This is not did not make it into the show. Uh, so I'm showing you, trying to show you guys some things that didn't come into the show because you guys have never seen this before. Uh, but you can see how large this footprint is. You know, I have big hands. Joe's hands were at least as big as mine, if not bigger. And I mean, his the palm of his hand it, with his fingers spread out like they are. I'm going to use the same hand he did. Wouldn't even fill this hole here. This this gap where the heel was. And this one, you know, this basically this footprint, I think he measured it at 18 inches. We found one that was 24 inches. I was just shocked. It was right directly in mud. And unfortunately, it was wet. And uh, I mean, it was just in a really bad spot. And we tried to we tried to get some of the water out and it just kept draining back in and it ruined the print. So uh, we couldn't cast it. That, that would have been a perfect cast because you had the Toe prints, you had the heel print. You could see where the mid torsal break was right in the middle. As you can kind of see here, there's a, like a mid torsal break. You can see how the heel went in. And then there was like a little bit of a of a uh, a cup in the middle of the foot. And then you can see the balls of the feet. And you can kind of see where the toes dug into some of the um, old pine needles and stuff. There's not much dirt. I mean, the first top three or four inches of of uh, stuff on the ground at Joe's camp was mainly deadfall. So it was very, I would say it's almost like spongy. So it absorbed a lot of the impact that they're making, which also gave them advantage. But when it rained a lot, there was no choice. It do does give way. There is some soil underneath that was pretty hard to compact. Um, and then basically it left this footprint. But again, you can kind of see a heel and a toe, maybe here, a toe, a toe, a toe, and a toe. Uh, maybe a little bit smaller Bigfoot, but very, very wide footprint. I wish he would have put something uh, across here to uh, show us how wide and how long it was. Uh, I do remember him saying it was about uh, 14, 15 inches and maybe 7 or 8 inches wide. So big, fat foot and uh, way bigger than my feet or his. Again, trail cam with a bunch of deer in here. And this is me, and this is when we first got Chance. Um, he loved running around up there. He was he enjoyed it. He, he did frequent uh, Joe's camp a few times before we met him, uh, but they didn't really remember him very much. Here's Joe and a friend of his. Um, this was kind of his way of getting around his property because it was uh, 55 acres, and he would cruise around on this thing. It was really fun for him to take us up to the top and drop us off and leave us. And then uh, we hiked back through this area throughout the night. Here's me walking through. Um, I was looking to make sure there wasn't anything else following me. Uh, sometimes if you zoom in on these pictures, you might see something like there's like kind of a silhouette here. But again, that's no proof of Bigfoot. It's just a darker shade. Um, there was no nothing conclusive here. So um, very thick, very overgrown and stuff. But uh, yeah. And then let me go into this trap cam photos. 
we got a lot of trap cam photos of this location. I'm not kind of talk I'm doing this backwards from last time. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about everything in just a minute here. So I'm going to show you a real quick video here. This is really quick. You're going to let me play this again. Let me pause it. Let me move this over Let me make it bigger. All right. Watch right here. Again, this is not my photo or video. This is Joe's. And I have a slower motion video. There's a Bigfoot standing literally right here. So let me play this. It happens in a split second. He only got a second of it. Okay. So you've seen that video. You've seen how quick it happened. Well, let me go back and play that for you on a slow motion. All right. So this is slow motion. I'm going to kind of speed through this a little bit. Okay, now you see him move his hand out of the way. There's something standing right here. And again, for some reason, I cannot zoom in on this. Um, but there's a Bigfoot standing right here, just standing right behind that tree. And you can see an arm, an arm, like a head. And you can kind of see a leg sticking out, a hairy leg and another leg kind of about back in the background. Sorry, I bumped you guys again. Uh, and I think there was actually one here and one here, but it freaked him out. He went out to get some water out of his uh, creek or something. And he looked up and there was this Bigfoot just standing there. So he quickly grabbed his uh, cell phone and tried to get a quick recording. And as soon as he saw them and they saw him with the phone, they ran. So they just disappeared. But you can kind of see, now you can see a little bit bigger. You can see the arm, arm, and it's it's just kind of standing there head it's kind of glancing around a tree at him there's a tree here it's glancing around a tree at him trying to probably look like a tree and again this is in slow motion so it's not the greatest video unfortunately joe uh was not very technological and his phone that he had was not very very good uh didn't have a great camera but he does try and pan back up so right here you can see it just standing right here that's actually probably the best frame. You can see it standing right here. You can see the arm. You can see kind of a leg. You can see the body. You can't quite see the head. But it's standing here. You can see the leg and the leg, and you can see how it's it's crotch. There might be another one over here. And I think there's one that's stuck behind a tree here. But this is this is probably just a juvenile, probably just watching to see what he's doing. They were always very curious of what Joe was doing. Uh, he said he would walk out sometimes and they'd just be standing there right at the edge of the forest. And I've, I've seen pictures of that. Um, but I'll have to go through and see if I can find them again uh, where there's Bigfoot standing. When I camped on his property, I put a tin up and stuff. I essentially um, saw them standing on the edge of the forest. And then as soon as I would peek over there, they would just like they'd either duck down or they'd pull back or whatever. And because uh, they knew that I could see them. So it both works both ways. You know, if you, if once they get to know you, they, they, they don't, they aren't as afraid to show themselves, especially if they know you're not going to try and hurt them, but they also know that I can see them. And it's like this game of oops, hide and seek. Oh, you saw me. I got to go run and hide now. So yeah, essentially this video just kind of keeps going on. It's, it's, it's very slow, but it's, it's again, it's a very slow motion because uh, I wanted to show you what that looked like, and we're going to go ahead and get out of there. Um, here's some other photos I've shown you from Joe's. Um, this is a trap cam. It's a possible Bigfoot walking right in front of the camera, and I mean, it's like literally right like up at the camera. It's standing right in front of the camera. Uh, probably another juvenile, possibly a head and some shoulders, an arm here, and like a torso. And then if we keep going, you can see it moves uh, a little to the right. This is another good one here. This was my trail camera. And something essentially walks right in front of it. I believe this is a shoulders and neck. This camera is up 10 feet in the air. So it wasn't like it was a deer or something. I put it up. I had to use a ladder. to put, I got up at the top rung of my ladder and put it up kind of facing down. So I think this is something walking by. So imagine this is it. 
the top, the top of the camera was around 10 feet. So what you're seeing is probably from about just about the chin up, maybe um, from the chin down, maybe. Basically, if you took my hat off or my took my from my nose down, that's pretty much what you're seeing. But you're seeing the back. If I was turned turned the other way, that's basically what you're seeing. It blocked the camera, and I think the reason it blocked the camera was there's another Bigfoot out here somewhere, and it didn't want it to get seen on camera. They got really smart to the trail cams, and when they would walk in, they would walk right in front of them, and stand there, and then basically you could see other things moving in the background in the videos. Unfortunately, this didn't take a video. And uh, I wasn't smart enough at this point in time to know that we should have shot a video. But uh, anyway, so moving on. Already seen this. Here's another video of, of something walking right in front of the camera. Uh, again, I do believe this possibly is a Bigfoot. Uh, I know I wasn't anywhere near this camera. Uh, I wish I would have had a um, video for this, but there's no video. It's just this. Something walks basically right in front of the camera, probably not paying any attention to it. Um, again, this is an area probably there was probably a deer or something out here, and it probably walked right in front of the camera, probably trying to use the tree for cover, and essentially um, got caught on camera. This was shot probably say, 1046. So it would have been pitch black out there at this time. And believe me, Joe's camp, there wasn't any lighting out there. The forest, got, when it got dark, it got dark. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. So essentially, I'm, I imagine this is actually the whitewash from the IR light. Let me see if there's another picture. Okay, here's another daytime photo. I keep zooming into this, but there's nothing here. I don't think there is. I keep feeling like there's something standing right here. And again, the more you zoom in, the more blurry it gets, the worse the picture is. But it kind of looks like there's a silhouette here. And I keep wanting to zoom into it. It feels like there's something here. And this feels like it's fur. This looks like it's some kind of fur. Like something either um, put its hand out or maybe it's a bird. I don't think it's a bird. It looks a little more like fur, long fur. And maybe it's for some reason it it just it put its hand out to block this again. And like I said, these things are smart. They got used to the trail cams. They knew what we were doing. They figured it out really quick. And so they would try and put things in. I found things. I found things literally like in front of the camera. One time I found a stick, a couple of sticks going like this in front of the lens of the camera. Somebody had put them in there and there was trail cams everywhere with other trail cams for some reason didn't go off. So something was blocking with a, some furry thing was blocking our trail camp. If you can see here, there's another down tree. Something snapped this tree off in the middle of the night. Uh, it didn't happen right then. But anyways, again, there's another probably 100,000 of these videos and pictures that I got to go back through now. Uh, more work to be done to just, just make sure I didn't miss anything. You can see the looped trees in the background they were everywhere everywhere on his property and uh so yeah just not sure i can't say this is a bigfoot can't say any of this is a bigfoot but it's interesting it's very interesting uh, and i think it was almost almost like a game to them all right let me stop sharing my screen all right so now you guys can see me again all right so let me go back to my my stories here and I'll tell you my first encounters. I'm trying not to make this an hour long video. Uh, like the other one was, if I had known it was an hour long, I probably would have cut it off at a half an hour and made a part two. But anyway, so let's go back into the questions I asked earlier. What was my first encounter? Uh, we kind of covered why this is a good big boat location. Uh, how many encounters did I have? What were your favorite encounters? And I shared some videos and pictures with you. So uh, my first encounter uh, I think my first encounter was actually of the Bigfoot that was standing in front of the blind. There was, I'm sorry, not in front, in behind the blind. Uh, I got there, I had my handy cam basically ready to go, battery in, turned on, viewfinder open, and, and uh, Joe came walking out of his trailer when I pulled up. And I left my trip, my 
handicap in the passenger seat, and I wish I wouldn't have, but I did, and it wasn't dark yet. It was still about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so it was still the sun was starting to set, but it wasn't dark at all. It was still pretty bright, and uh, there was a lot of shadows in the, in the trees where the forest was. But I heard a noise, and I turned and looked at his blind, and... I couldn't really see anything. We heard, we kept hearing like noises coming from over there and his blind was basically at the end of where his camp was at the front part of his property within the first 20, 20 or 30 yards of where his, his basically his camp ended. And then there was another, a whole bunch more acreage just straight out. His, if you've ever heard me talk about Joe's camp, his property is like a football field, almost exactly the same size as a football field. Uh, but a little wider, I think. And so it was basically the front part of his camp was um, where he lived. And the back part is where he like grew food and stuff like that. Joe was a true mountain man. He kind of lived off of the land a little bit and stuff like that. And uh, he just was a cool guy overall. But so he had he would hunt on his property from time to time. He would shoot deer. And people would come on and basically um, his family would come on and, and get a deer every once in a while. And so he had a blind that was, we had just, we had just worked on it the previous time I was there and uh, I had not seen anything. I'd heard a lot of stuff and experienced some eye shine and stuff, but I'd never actually seen anything on his property. And so we had worked on the blind and I knew the exact measurements because we cut some wood for it. The top of his blind was about seven or eight feet. I think it was around eight feet off the ground. And then basically there was a very wide, had to be about a three ra foot radius tree. So it was about three feet wide pine, uh, pine tree. Beautiful pine tree. It had to be pushing at least, it was over a hundred feet tall. And so essentially there was the pine tree and his blind, and then a road behind it, and then he had the forest on either side of the road, real thick forest, right? Like if you went out in the woods. So all of a sudden, we he, we just were standing there, and I'm like, wait, what is that? And we're look, both looking at it, and we're going, okay, between where the top of his um, blind is, and there's some branches about three or four feet up above that, around, around the eight or nine foot mark, there's... Uh, where the tree branches kind of come out and then it gets real thick above that, right? If you've ever seen a pine tree, you know, they kind of grow out straight out of the branches. A lot of the branches grow straight out. Anyways, so a couple of feet above that, all of a sudden you see these branches start to get pushed down and something kind of bends down like this. And you can see the uh, shoulders and the head kind of peeking down. And we just see this huge thing standing there looking at us. Now, where that road goes, it actually goes down a couple of feet as it goes. It goes down and then forms a ravine and then comes back up. And he has a bridge over there or had a bridge over there to um, allow the water to go through. Because when he gets rain, it uh, essentially floods over there. And uh, so, yeah, he um, we were sitting there looking at this thing and it's looking at us. I'm like, holy crap. And Joe goes, Joe goes to me, Matt, do you have your camera with you? And I'm like, no. I'm like, uh, and I knew, I just knew as soon as I went to go grab the camera, this thing would disappear. Right. And that's exactly what happened. I ran over real quick. We're only like three or four steps away from, from the car. And as soon as I ran over, got the, got the camera and hit the record button. I looked back over. It was gone. Didn't make any noise. Just walked into the woods and disappeared. And so I was like, ah, damn it. I mean, these things could be standing there. It didn't matter how big they were. They could be standing there and you could be looking into the forest and you would not see them. They just look like trees. They were very good at looking like trees. And I had a lot of encounters with them where I just, they just look like trees. So I'm pretty sure that was my first encounter. Um, what was my favorite encounter? So my favorite encounter was when later on that night, he and I, went into uh if you went to the left of his property he had his trailer here he had actually three trailers he had one here one in the middle kind of like a u-shaped and then he had another one here on the left side and on the left side he had forest but he also had a lot of bamboo he had been growing bamboo 
to try and sell and use it for other things. Uh, and he actually did use it for some construction on his property. But that bamboo forest was about five or six years old, and it had taken over a good portion of the left side of his property. And that area was very sandy, very sandy. Like if you went to the beach and, and you you kind of put your fingers through the sand, it was kind of like that on top of the deadfall. There wasn't a lot of deadfall over there because there wasn't a lot of regular trees. So they were kind of mixed in. But the, the pine was the main, not the pine, the bamboo was the main thing. Sorry, my phone's going crazy over there. Um, so anyways, we start walking in there, and as we're going, it gets darker and darker and darker. <laughs> and you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. It was probably about only like 8 or 9 o'clock. It had to be 90 plus degrees out, and it was like 100% humidity. It was just, we were just melting. I mean, we were literally just dripping sweat. And uh, so we're walking through. And as we were walking through, I hear a snap and we both stopped and we're like, okay, what the hell was that? And then we heard like movement and I'm like, okay, I don't know what that is. And I have that little Sony hand cam with the little one inch by one inch viewfinder. And that's what I'm using to see, right? Um, Cause I can't see my hand in front of my face. It's, it, I, I didn't want to turn a flashlight on because I didn't want them to be able to see us coming or scare anything away. So we're going really slow. We're just taking one step and then another step and stopping and listening and trying to observe what's going around, you know, with the camera. And so we got into that piney area, the, pine, the um, excuse me, the bamboo area. And there's these where the sand is, it had been dug out almost like giant bathtubs. It was probably two or three feet wide and probably I would have to say at least 10, 12 feet long. Or these there's there was just like if you went to the beach and you kind of made a big like a bathtub almost. But these long skinny bathtubs, I think I think we walked in on them where they were sleeping. Cause there was this commotion. And all of a sudden you just see what looks like a bunch of giant dogs hightailing it out of his property across the way onto the road next door. And now mind you, it, there are homes over there. But there's nobody over there. There's a lot of old abandoned structures and stuff like that. And uh, stuff like that. I apologize for my phone. It's really distracting me. But as we're walking through, I had turned and walked a little bit to the right because I heard a noise. I heard like a tree branch snap. So I was trying to figure out where that was coming from. And I was walking straight ahead. Again, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. I was just using this little viewfinder to try and find my way around. And I'm kind of winding my way through trees and trying not to step in giant holes and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, and Joe's right next behind me, kind of like his hand on my shoulder to make sure he didn't step in anything or break a leg or anything. And you hear um, this guttural growl. And I just stopped in my tracks. And I literally, I wish I wouldn't have done this, but I panned my camera to the right and then panned back to the left to see what the heck was going on to see if I could see anything. And I went way too fast, you know, mistakes made, lessons learned. And as I panned to the right and I slowed it down, you can kind of see what looks like a big hairy stomach. And that's at my, my head level because I had the camera way up here. I had it up at my eye level. So I'm six foot two. So imagine a stomach up about six feet high, <laughs> like the lower stomach, like the belly button area. So add another, what, three, four feet to that. That thing was pushing at least 10, 11, 12 feet tall. And I'm pretty sure it was one of the males and it was protecting probably a bunch of females more than likely. And they all took off and it, it basically... I almost walked into this thing. I mean, I literally almost walked into this thing. And so I didn't even know what happened until I went back and reviewed, reviewed the footage. But it makes sense now. It's like, okay, I don't know what that thing would have done if I walked right into its stomach. That would have been, I don't know. That would have been, I don't know who would have been more scared, it or me, or I don't know what would have happened. I, I don't know if I would have just turned and walked away or what would have happened. But uh, who knows? I mean, that was both extremely scary and 
thrilling and exhilarating and a whole lot of things all at once. And uh, I really wish I would, if I had known it was there, I would have grabbed up and reached up and grabbed a chunk of hair and ran if I could. Um, I don't think that would have gone so well, but anyways, that was probably my, one of my favorite encounters out there with them. Um, if you've watched, uh, basically Joe's camp, you've, you've seen a lot of stuff on that. Um, how many encounters do we have out there? Oh my gosh. So when I say encounter, I mean, you know, I heard something, I saw something, um, we heard tree knocks, we heard branches snap and, and branches snapping could be deer going through the woods. It could be a lot of things. A friend of mine who is an out, avid outdoorsman, he's a hunter as well. He's gone back through that video a couple of times for me and basically listened um, to some of the noises, but some, some of the screams, oh my God, that one scream. We listened um, to that scream go on. Uh, who was it? I forget who was with me, but uh, a few people have gone with me when we've heard the screams and there's this guttural scream that just it just went oh it was like moaning it was like somebody was having a uh i can't i want to make sure they keep this g-rated but um you know having a good time hint hint um and it just that's what it sounded like but it was just so loud it was echoing through the whole canyon and went on for five almost six minutes i don't know what it was i i, I can't tell you it was bigfoot but it, it was like nonstop. It's just screaming, like a just a wild scream. Was well, didn't sound human, didn't sound like any animal. I've I've played it for people and they're like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, it's, it doesn't sound like any Bigfoot scream I've ever heard. And it doesn't really fit anything. It doesn't fit any animals that I could find. Uh I don't know where that audio is. I need I'm sure it's in my uh on one of my external hard drives. But yeah, I mean just insane. And we recorded it until the camera decided to turn off. Thanks to the ghost at Joe's camp. Um, so we turned our cameras off and drain the kept draining the batteries, fresh battery, right off the charger, fully full turned off. I had three cameras going at the time that was going on. Two of them decided to turn off and I had to switch out to one camera because, um, it was overheating. So that's another problem out here when uh, it gets too hot the cameras get hot and then basically they they turn off because they get too hot so anyways uh okay that was my that was uh another crazy encounter and basically i think joe's in a nutshell i think joe's property was a good location because there was food there was actually um an orchard up the way from his property uh, it could go, it could go around again, cover, lots of cover. Um, didn't feel threatened by Joe or me or anybody else. Um, there was a farm next door and I was told that pigs had gone missing from their pens in the middle of the night. And uh, I was also told that one person had come up and seen a Bigfoot with two pigs under each arm, basically walked in the pen, grabbed the two pigs they didn't even move. They just, they, I guess they were frozen in fear, picked them up and turned and walked away with them. Uh, but they wouldn't uh, come on camera or talk to us. They were uh, afraid of ridicule, which sucks um, because we don't want people to ever be uh, afraid of being ridiculed for telling their stories. Um, but yeah, it's just, I mean, the whole area is a great pl place because there's not a lot of people. Um you know, there's plenty of cover. There's plenty of food. There's wild edibles up there and stuff like that. So these places just all have the same things in common. They have cover. They have water. They have food. Uh, easy concealment. Um, easy for them to get around without being seen if they don't want to. Um, they're not being threatened in any way and stuff like that. So, again, these places just kind of go even though they're you know, the Bigfoots are down close to humans, I don't really believe that they're afraid of humans unless they've been shot out by somebody. And so I, I don't think that a lot of these Bigfoots are afraid of us. I think that they observe us and they observe us for a long time. I don't think that they're, I think that they're observing us without being seen first. And then they, as they kind of feel safe, safer, they come a little closer 
and sometimes they get a little closer and then all of a sudden it's like oh uh, i got a little too close i got seen or i had an ex you know that person had experience with me or maybe i threw something at them speaking of throwing things at somebody uh, we had a client and you can see the hair right where it says cup and the line there's a hair on here uh, i've never had it tested it's a very long hair it goes from just below a quarter of a cup to just above where the uh, half a cup is. And uh, one of these days, we're going to take it out of there and take a look at it under a microscope. But uh, yeah, just, just crazy. He had, Joe always had things thrown at him. He said they would take mud clusters and pine cones and throw them at him because there weren't a lot of rocks on his property. So he said they when they did throw rocks, he didn't know where they, who, they were getting them. Because we couldn't really find any rocks. But uh, there was a lot of stories from Joe's. But it was a special place. And like I said, if you're uh, a relative of Joe's or you're a friend of Joe's and you're listening to our podcast uh, and uh, you're able to, please contact us. Let us know what's going on with the property. Uh, again, I'm really hoping that they have just left it alone and they haven't sold it and they're letting it just be. And that the Bigfoots are thriving there without being disturbed and uh, stuff like that. So anyways, that's my work. I got to go, guys. You have a good one and we will catch you on the next one.